After that introduction, I feel I can't live up to it, so I'm just going to sit down. No. <laughs> I'm going to read from Deeply Notched Leaves. The Fruitvale BART Station, Oakland, California, January 1, 2009. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Did you know before today a bullet fired in disdain, callous indifference into a young father's back? as he lies face down on harsh cement, will power through, race through his body prone, bounce off the pavement cold, and splash back into vital organs like the heart and spirit and soul, leaving no room for compromise, explanation, or forgiveness, no time to say goodbye to his lovely baby daughter. But you know now. Of the I sing for Oscar Grant. Thank you. I see some silver hair in the audience. For the rest of you, a Rosie the Riveter was popular name for the women who worked in the war plants during World War II. This is for my mother. When you left me to go hide in that silk-lined casket, I pulled fresh dandelions and hid them in my coat until the grave diggers rested their shovels. I scattered your lioness dandies on the dirt covering your new home. Near the end of my childish days, you always did travel without me. This cemetery trick was no new game. To see you dance once more to that swing music you liked on the radio when you thought no one was watching, recalling a time before husband and kids and worries, when you worked swing shift with all the other rosies, then danced the night away. To hear you laugh once more would have been sweet. We're starting out nice and soft, and then we're going to end up nice and rough. <laughs> I love Tina. I have two Tina dolls. <laughs> Wearing a poem. She woke up somewhere in her fifth decade and decided to start treating herself right. A hard struggle it was, yanking permission from the many judges holding forth. Evicting them took effort, but she did it, heaving too with pitchfork and fire. Now she could eat chocolate as a right, R-I-T-E, and buy a latte every day, damn the expense. Wrap mother of pearl around her wrist and dangle seductive earrings from her lobes. Ordem order custom arch supports and drape long silk scarves around her golden brown neck. Wear a lipstick carnelian in color, sporting the name Toast of New York. Easy to understand this alluring defiance. She carries a poem in her eyes. Mm. I see a lot of homeless, and I notice some people in an alley one day. One young man seemed to be protecting others. This is called Every Indifferent Glance. Very clear he was about his outlook in life. Work with what you know. Work with what you have. First person care is the rule. Let every glance be indifferent to others. Once you are clear, they pose no threat. 
She was small in that alley corner. He typed her, then ignored her with every indifferent glance. Stretching under a thin red coat, shivering every breath she took, so small in that corner of the alley, not worth a serious look in his backgammon world. Rose, where did you get? Sprinted through his memory, quick stepping past old pain. Rose, where did you get that red? That other one had been a miniature, too, in her merry girl crimson shawl. He shrugged and repositioned his hard-won nonchalance all through evening shadows so that every indifferent glance could find this new heart quickly in case she lasted through the night. She awoke in that alley corner under a flowering full moon, glanced both ways, and then sat up. Beside her, a coffee mug, a whiskey cup, and poetry by Ho Chi Minh. Wide-eyed, she reached for the poems. With gentle caution, he brought her a red shawl. He brought her a safe welcome. He offered a chance to walk a new path. I'd rather write about anybody else except myself. Writing memoir is hard. You knock on doors nobody wants to open. Let the past stay past. Under padlock and leafy moss blankets, you knock on those windows with tiny panes. Memory won't let you in there out of pity. Too rough on your consciousness. Emotions likely to rile up and stomp. Writing memoir is hard. You have to go really slow, walk along dusty pathways with a watering can, stop to take in deeply notched leaves, hear the sighing of tree branches in the wind as they recall close cousins cut down. You go home and chant as candles glow. You hold jars of beets your grandmother canned, caress earrings blue and silver your mother left before she walked away, and that brown radio in an antique store, just like the one your dad listened to, you stand and whisper to it, close your eyes and imagine, simply imagine where he might be buried. Writing memoir is hard. A gray stone library beckons and you climb its steep and winding staircase with urgency, at least you did before the plague years. You stroll along the shelves and touch book spines. When one touches you back, you open and read. Memories slip from printed pages, rifle through your curls, nestle in your crimson scarf. Close to the bay, you walk the Embarcadero. Ancestors float in, waving from fishing boats a thousand miles from Great Lakes territory. You recall fish fries, lamps hung from trees, laughter lighting up sundown shadows. The tide goes out before, wait, before they hook a place in your memory. On public transit, electric bus and metro car people parade past. You inspect for that trace of yesterday others find in family Bibles and albums bulging with photos posed and candid. A stranger smiles and greets you by your birth name, unknown out here on the West Coast. What are the archangels trying to tell you? Start with the little girl first. You know, the one with long braids on the cover of February Voices. Find her again. Won't be easy, but gain her trust, and the cadences will emerge, will outshine manufactured dreams, break through your silence. This memoir business is hard, but where else are you to go? I like my neighborhood. I've been there 20 years. And then these other people came in. Lord have mercy. Avacha likes this poem, so I'm proud of that. The dual face of fear. In my city, walking along my streets, looking like the visitor you are, you give me that look that says you're questioning my credentials, my authenticity, my right to be here in my city. Walking in my direction, you suddenly notice my golden brown roundness and show all those attitudes, entertain all those postures, grabbing your purse and holding it close in as I walk past you. 
Let me tell you something. All the while you brush past me wearing African jewelry and cornrow braids. A touch of blackness in fashion where you come from while you clutch your designer knockoff, making me unwelcome in my own hood when I walk by on my sidewalk. Let me tell you something. You clearly cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is fake. So listen up real good, wench. If I wanted to, I could remove your fake face and paste it on that designer knockoff. But since no part of you is real, why should I bother? <laughs>